Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Has he been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe his manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that he has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe him to be qualified for this order. Matthew. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. And I do solemnly declare that I believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline and worship of the Episcopal Church. Please sign the declaration. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Matthew for ordination. Therefore, if any of you know of any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Matthew be ordained a priest? Yes. Will you uphold him in this ministry? We will. Let us pray in peace to the Lord. God the Father, have have mercy mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. For all members of your church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, hunger for your truth, and may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. 
for Matthew, chosen priest in your church, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, that he may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, that by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, he may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. For the poor and the persecuted, the sick and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. O oh Lord our God, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. 
Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. From the Psalm 132. Wyrusz o Panie na miejsce Twego odpocznienia, Ty i Twoja Arka pełna chwały. Niech się kapłani Twoi odzieją w sprawiedliwość, a Twoi czciciele niech się radują. Przez wzgląd na sługę Twojego Dawida nie odtrącaj oblicza Twego pomazańca. Pan zaprzysiągł Dawidowi trwałą obietnicę, od której nie odstąpi. Potomstwo z Ciebie zrodzone posadzę na tronie. Jeżeli zachowają Twoje synowie moje przymierze i moje napomnienia, których im udzielę, także ich synowie na wieki zasiądą na Twoim tronie. Pan bowiem wybrał Syjon, tej siedziby zapragnął dla siebie. To jest miejsce mego odpoczynku na wieki. Tu będę mieszkał, bo tego pragnąłem dla siebie. Będę szczodrze błogosławił Jego zasobą, Jego ubogich nasycę chlebem, Jego kapłanów odzieję zbawieniem, a ci, którzy Go prawdziwie miłują, będą się radować. Wzbudzę tam moc dla Dawida, zgotuję światło dla mego pomazańca, odzieję wstydem Jego przyjaciół, nieprzyjaciół, a nad Nim zabłyśnie Jego korona. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worth, worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Jesus had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Today we're gathered in this place in a huge crowd of witnesses, a huge cloud of witnesses, even though there's only a handful of us to honor the great gift of compassion that has been given to you, Matthew, and that has been given to your church as we make you a priest of compassion. Now these days, lots of us have the experience of looking around and feeling ourselves harassed and helpless and looking at others and seeing them with that kind of compassion that Jesus felt. We're in a time of pandemic, as we all know. Almost 200,000 Americans have died in this pandemic, and many more the world over. Millions of people in the world infected with this illness. And the way it has become politicized in our nation can leave us feeling harassed and helpless. We know that there are floodwaters rising in the Gulf Coast today and in some other parts of the nation too, and fires still burn in the Northwest. There is so much in our world that leaves people feeling harassed and helpless and deeply in need of compassion. And even here, even here in this day of celebration, in the great cloud of witnesses of the heavenly host and people joining in on social media, yet there's also the sadness of loss. Your family in Poland who are not able to be here other family and friends and people who have been a part of your journey, Matthew, for so long can't be here physically in person. It is a sadness. It is a loss even today. Yet one more of those many things that can leave us feeling harassed and helpless and that also moves us to deep compassion. Compassion is a powerful force for change and for good in the world. When Jesus looked at people and saw them as harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd and was moved to compassion, he was also moved to action. It wasn't simply a feeling. And of course, in the, in the Hebrew language, you might remember in the Old Testament, compassion refers to a literal feeling in the gut, a twist and turning right there in the belly. It's a physical thing. But Jesus didn't stop with feeling that. He then acted. He healed the sick. 
He forgave those in need of forgiveness. He loved the unlovable. In compassion, he acted in concrete ways. We in his name are called to do the same. You, as a priest, will be called, are called, to a ministry of compassion, of Jesus' love shown in concrete action. We know as human beings that compassion, especially in a time like this when there's just so much need in the world, that we can experience compassion overload, that we can end up exhausted, depleted, as we see so much need in the world and so much aching and twisting in our own bellies. The readings that we heard today show us the counterbalance. They show us what we need so that compassion doesn't exhaust us in compassion overload. And that's in the reading from Paul who said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, in case you didn't hear me the first time, again I say, rejoice. Now it's really good news that Paul didn't say, be happy, y'all. Be happy in the Lord always. Because as we read scripture, there's a real distinction there. Happiness often for us is dependent on external things. I'm happy because I now have a new car or because my child has gotten into the college of her choice. External things can lead to that feeling of happiness. But joy is something so much deeper. Joy lives at the core of us in the belly, right in that same place where compassion twists and turns us. Joy is there because Jesus has put it there. In the Gospel of John, we hear it recorded that Jesus said, I have come that my joy may be in you and that your joy will be complete. And Jesus showed us in his life how to live that joy. If there is anyone who would have been defeated by compassion overload, it would have been Jesus. But he also knew joy. Compassion and joy lived side by side in his gut. And out of joy, he danced at at least one wedding. Out of joy, he took children in his arms and blessed them. Out of a combination of joy and compassion, he healed people in need. He preached the good news. He showed folks how to live. And he showed us with such a life of great integrity, of joy and compassion intermingled, that he lived his life all the way, even to death on the cross, and to life on the other side. Joy and compassion lived together, intermingled, and animated Jesus' spirit. Joy and compassion are gifts that Jesus gives to us. And we can touch that joy and that place deep inside, that joy that lives right next to compassion and that also lives next to peace. Even if we're not happy, even when we're deeply sad, the joy of Christ is still there to strengthen us, to uphold us. Matthew, as you are ordained priest, in just a few moments, you'll make many promises, many pledges, we'll give you uh, many affirmations and also challenges Always know 
no matter what else, that you are a man of joy because you are a man of Christ. And Jesus has put that joy deep down in you. And that joy, even in times of sadness, even in times of loss, will strengthen you to live the life of compassion and concrete action to which you have been called. Amen. Let us now proclaim our faith in the God of compassion and joy in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Stand. Are you ready? My brother Matthew, the church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, priest, and teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, and to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for, for young and old strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and to strengthen them to glorify God 
in this life and in the life to come. My brother Matthew, do you believe that you are truly called by God and God's church to this priesthood? I do believe I am so called. Do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ? I will. Will you endeavor so to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and your fellow ministers to build up the family of God? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the med mediation of Jesus Christ and the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? I will. May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen.
God and Father of all, we praise you for your infinite love in calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many and the head of the church. We pray you that by his death, he, we thank you that by his death, he has overcome death and having ascended into heaven, has poured his gifts abundantly among your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Matthew. Fill him with grace and power and make him a priest in your church. God, we give you thanks for this, your servant, Matthew. Strengthen him, give him your peace and guidance throughout his entire ministry. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for this day. Amen. Amen. May Matthew exalt you, O Lord. In the midst of your people, offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make him a faithful pastor, a, pac a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Matthew received this Bible as a sign of the authority given to you to preach the word of God and to administer God's holy sacraments. Never, ever forget the trust committed to you as a priest in God's church. Let us greet Matthew, our new priest. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also... Peace be with you. Let us, let us share the sun of peace with one another contactless. <laughs> peace be with you. Seat. Um, congratulations, Matthew. Uh, welcome to all of you who are here today, and welcome to all of you who are joining us through social media. My name is Charlie, and I'm the rector of St. Paul's here in Richmond, Virginia. And on behalf of the worshiping community of St. Paul's, I'd like to say that it is a privilege and an honor to be able to support these services in this way and help them come to you. It's also uh, a joy and honor to partner with our bishops uh, in, in this community of faith, in this spiritual family. If there's ever anything that I or St. Paul's can do to be helpful or supportive, please reach out. I add my thanks to you Charlie, and to the people of St. Paul's for this marvelous gift of hospitality. Matthew made vows and promises today, and we all made a promise as well to support him in his ministry. A concrete way to do that is to give a gift of money toward his discretionary fund. All gifts received this week will be divided equally among the eight people who are ordained priests, one at a time, during this week. If you have a bulletin, you'll see instructions about how to give electronically. If you're watching on a social media platform, there will be a link to the bulletin. All you need to do is click on that link, and you will see these directions for how to give. We ask you to give generously as a sign of supporting these new priests. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Zaprawdę godne to i sprawiedliwe, słuszne i zbawienne, abyśmy Tobie, Ojcze Wszechmogący, Stwórco nieba i ziemi, zawsze i wszędzie składali dziękczynienie. Przez wielkiego pasterza Twojej trzody, Jezusa Chrystusa, Pana naszego, który po swoim zmartwychwstaniu posłał nam apostołów, aby głosili Ewangelię i nauczali wszystkie narody i obiecał być z nimi na zawsze i aż do końca świata. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Te damos gracias, oh Dios, por la bondad y el amor que tú nos has manifestado en la creación, en la llamado a Israel para ser tu pueblo, en tu verbo revelado a través de los profetas, y sobre todo, en el verbo que hecho carne, Jesús, tu Hijo. Pues en la plenitud de los tiempos le has enviado para que se encarnará de María la Virgen, a fin de ser el Salvador y Redentor del mundo. En Él nos has librado del mal y nos has hecho dignos de estar en tu presencia. En Él nos has sacado del error a la verdad, del pecado a la rectitud y de la muerte a la vida. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Podobnie po wieczerze wziął kielich wina. I ponownie dzięki Tobie składając, podał swoim uczniom, mówiąc, bierzcie i pijcie z niego wszyscy. To jest bowiem kielich krwi mojej nowego i wiecznego przymierza, która za Was i za wielu będzie wylana na odpuszczenie grzechów. Zawsze, gdy z niego pijecie, czyńcie to na moją pamiątkę. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, with Hildegard von Bingen, and all your saints, we may, ever, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, in the languages of our heart, as our Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Ojcze nasz, któryś jest w niebie, święć się imię Twoje, przyjdź królestwo Twoje, bądź wola Twoja, jako w niebie, tak i na ziemi. Chleba naszego powszedniego daj nam dzisiaj i odpuść nam nasze winy, jako i my odpuszczamy naszym winowajcom. I nie wódź nas na pokuszenie, ale nas zbaw od złego, bo Twoje jest królestwo i potęga i chwała na wieki wieków. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine together, we thank you that we have received Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion and resurrection. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your love, be renewed for your service, and be reflections of the awakened and risen Lord. Amen. Continue now with the prayer of thanksgiving on page 12 of our service leaflet. In the middle of the prayer where you see the letter N, we insert the name Matthew. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us 
with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Matthew may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with him may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.